So if you've been hearing a lot about microdosing these days, are you curious as to what is microdosing and how would you do microdosing? We'll have all of this in discussion after this. So keep watching. Hi, we're back with Dr. George Tiliatos on another uh, question time with the doctor. Hi, George, how are you? I'm fine, Mike. Thank you for the invitation. Well, thanks for coming back uh, back on your, your program here. So wanted to talk to you today about the topic, Every, not everyone, but there's a lot of people in the TRT community that are talking about microdosing. Now, this is something that uh, is, is based on the frequency of, of, of dosing, but what what in your uh, what, what's your take on microdosing? What is microdosing in, in, in the way you practice, and uh, and then how how would you do it? So why don't we just start by asking you what is microdosing from your point of view? So microdosing, as the name implies, is in, in, instead of using uh, one large dose of testosterone per week. So for instance, one ml, which is two hundred fifty milligrams, if it's and or 200 milligrams if it's CPNA, then we split it and then we inject 0.1 or 0.2 or whatever mLs uh, two times a week, three times a week, every other day or even every day. Okay. okay? And the, the benefit of this is, is prevent the fluctuations and uh, avoid this kind of fluctuations and it doesn't matter what day of the lab work is because uh, either every day or every other day, pretty much the testosterone levels will be um, will be the same. Now, of course, some people tend to aromatize more, and by the frequent protocol injecting, um, you prevent this. You prevent the spike of estradiol, and the same goes for DHT because DHT and estradiol are the two metabolites of testosterone. So DHT then favors perhaps erythrocytosis. So it's different to, to, to use 25 milligrams every day that makes 175 per week instead of shooting at once 150 once a week. But other people like myself, they have low SHBG. However, my low SHBG is due to the fact I'm using Proviron as well. Okay, so you're so, artificially lowering your SHBG. So yes, would you say that when you know, a patient may start with a high SHBG level, starting on TRT, then you know, you, let's say you started them on weekly injections would, and then you brought down their SHBG, would you then change that patient into a more frequent dosing regime? This is the one option. The other option, as Chrysler used to say, is we can elevate the TRT dose. That because androgens will crash on SHBG no matter what it is, if it's testosterone, if it's anabolic steroids, so um, a, high, a high dose of uh, an androgen will lower SHPG and will liberate more free testosterone. That's why steroids tend to increase sex drive. But uh, of course, with a larger dose, then you have also consequences of aromatization, you know, elevated hematocrit. But I remember in his book, Chris Lee used to, to, to say, I prefer higher SHPG rather than low because I can elevate my TRT dose. Of course, if your TRT dose is already high, then what do you do? Then I guess um, you have to introduce synthetic DHT, which is Danazol or uh, Mesterolone. Mesterolone. So Danazol and Mesterolone or Proviron and, and Danazol. And there were, there were some, some studies that say that mortality is linked to low SHBG. Is, is the low SHBG then related to a metabolic syndrome and prediabetes? So sometimes you see the, 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 the truth is that insulin resistance in diabetic people, perhaps this is the, the link between low SHBG, metabolic but syndrome, and diabetes. When you've got a patient who's fine on weekly dosing, right? Because you said some people will require you know, less frequent dosing. Do you then change them to more frequent dosing, or would you just leave if they're happy with, with the results they're getting? It depends how they feel. There are some patients in my in my work that say, uh, Doc, I'm using, for instance, every Monday 250, but during the weekend, I cannot perform with my girlfriend. As the testosterone levels go down during the weekend, if you shoot on Monday, then there's a problem. In those cases, you cannot change the protocol. All you can do is to administrate some 
DHT, which is a uh, proviron. Uh, now, if the patient has already low SHBG, then you can administer the frequent, the everyday protocol or the every other day. All right, so with microdosing, you said there's different different ways you can do microdosing. Uh, which which format of microdosing uh, work, works the best? I mean, is there uh, a, an ideal? I mean, some people talk about daily as microdosing. Some people will say two times a week. The other is regular, okay, twice a week, okay. Three times uh, a week. What about three times a week? Should, should 112 a week, you know? Okay. Have you seen cases of people not getting benefit on microdosing? Is it possible to go too low on this microdose? Yeah, people have elevated this HBG through this, through this uh, mechanism, you know, and the free testosterone is not that high. I think we, we should uh, be concerned of the symptoms. If the patient is asymptomatic, you know, it doesn't matter so much what the paper says. And uh, we have to verify, of course, uh, the clinical etiology along with uh, the laboratory. Okay, so it's individual. So in the last video, we, we discussed about microdosing TRT, TRT optimization or, or SCAM. And, and that was designed to kind of address the question. And we had Nelson Virgil on there. And you were very gracious enough to write a very nice comment which got several other comments. So you, you discussed that you inject every morning and it's like refilling your batteries and get yes. ready to work. But of course, this is not convenient for casual people. So maybe you're the OCD guy. Uh, because I was a bodybuilder and I was forced to take my pills and shoot my shots. Yeah. It, it, may not be, it may not be for everyone. So then we yes. had a message from uh, Brian, Brian Beckworth in the in the comments he said um he was specifically asked to switch to daily dosing making it a part of his daily routine he said is easier than asking his wife uh, that um about i guess it, which day is it is it wednesday he thinks he's an ocd yeah i have the too. same issue now is it uh, did i shoot on tuesday or did i shoot on wednesday so you have to check to, to to choose a stable either monday wednesday friday or Thursday, uh, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you know? Well, I mean, you just put uh, it in your, um, in your phone, in, in, your, uh, in, in, the, in the calendar in your phone, like this way you're, you're able to just look at which day it is, and, and you get your- Actually, twice a week is easier because you don't get so that confused. It's either Monday or Thursday, or Tuesday and Friday, or Wednesday and Sunday, you know? So I do it three times a week, or well, not three times a week, every third day. Is that would I fall into the microdosing camp? It's borderline, yes. So I want to be this in the is... club, though. I want to be in the microdosing club. I don't know if I want to do it every day. I'll tell you my opinion on. I can. We, I, the, transdermal, the transdermal every day is in about microdosing, of course. Well, exactly. So, so transdermal is microdosing. Yes. Okay. So creams are microdosing. It's so, small doses and frequent doses as well. So maybe this is my own anxiety that. You know, I, I did the creams for three to four years when, when I first started the treatment. And, it, it, you know, there was a benefit. I was getting twice daily application to my scrotum. And it was, uh, you know, it, it got the levels nice on, on trough. But if I was without the creams, if I left them somewhere, if I didn't have it with me, the levels would drop rather quickly. So they, you felt in a... and you would not, you get your symptoms to return. Yeah, but 48 hours later, your, your symptoms may return. Now, of energy. With the injections, you've got a longer a room. You've got, you've got a, a longer yeah. cushion. Yeah. So if I went to daily injections, let's say test prop or every other day, there's a risk that I wouldn't have that, that luxury, that cushion, especially if I were traveling. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't completely... Uh, you know, gone that route to uh, to a full microdosing myself. If I had no issues with E2 and, and uh, hematocrit, perhaps I wanted to use 250 once a week. Okay, so that's so it, there's nothing wrong with doing 250. Oh, 200, I'm sorry, 200 or you know, the optimal dose, but this paranoid thing every day is in order to control the metabolites. The microdosing may be may be right for you, it might not be the right one for you. SHBG uh, has a large part to play. All right, so that is our episode four. 
microdosing, what is it and how to do it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and join us for the video after this. So thanks again, George. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.